from somewhere below the surface of the Midwest. In the studio wing of the adult bands of Nerf Secret Bunker, this is the Avon Show. With your hosts, Mr. K and Mr. S. Welcome to the adult fans of Nerf Show. Today we're going to be talking about Vortex. Nerf! Now with more frisbees than ever! That's right, Travis. We may have touched on the subject in our first episode, but with better technology and a little more time and knowledge, we've learned a little bit more about the Vortex lineup, and we've got some new news to share with you as well. Some great stuff coming down the pipeline. Yep, as well as what's already come out this year. What's that, you might say? The Lumatron. The Lumatron. It's basically a Praxis, only slightly cooler. Yeah, I mean, the Praxis doesn't really need a stock to be cool. All it needs is a glow-in-the-dark disc clip. Now, I was a little bit wrong about this last episode when we were talking about clips. I said that it was about the same size as a 20-rounder. Um, it is, it is a little bit shorter than that. It's probably about, oh, well, almost Inch. there. There's a little bit of a difference. Um, potato, potato, whatever. Um, it's cool. Absolutely. And of course it works with all Vortex Blasters, so once you get this, you got the clip for all your Vortex Blasters. And that's what I really like about um, the, the Light It Up series. Since the glow-in-the-dark mechanism is in the clip and not in the blaster itself, you can glow in the dark with whatever Vortex Blaster you want, really. Well, except for the Vigilant and the Proton, but that's enough said. Yeah. It's pretty much the same deal as with the Raven and, say, the Maverick. Yeah. I mean, you could put the glow-in-the-dark thingies in there, but they wouldn't glow when you shot them. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we... We've touched on Vortex before in our first episode, but uh, that was a long time ago. That was way back in September that was when, when we first started. Still, when we were, we were still new. Yeah. yeah. And so, we were still new. Yeah. Had that got, new smell, that new show smell. Yeah. That's worn off. Yep. And now that we moved deeper into the bunker and we have more time to play with the Vortex Blasters, we're here to talk about them a little bit more. So let's start out with... The Proton. Proton. Kind of your nuts and bolts, little pistol, single shot. I really like the mechanism on this thingy. Uh, kind of a pull-out slider. You put your one disc in there, little um, ambidextrous little thingy there. Boop, ready to go. Um, really cool. Gets really good distance. Yep, and it's it gets uh, really good accuracy as well. Yeah. Um, considering when you take the other ones into account, it probably gets the best accuracy out of any of them. Well, I mean, it, I, I put the, the Proton in the same vein as the Scout, and the Scout is probably one of the most accurate handheld Nerf Blasters that, we've, that I've ever seen. So yeah, I, it's, it's no surprise to me that with it being so, so small and compact that it gets the best accuracy. Yep. There's not a lot to it, so there's not a lot to get wrong. Yep. Short, sweet, and to the point. I don't... I've never really been a fan of that, but whatever. I never yeah. Use, I never use it. Yeah, they really need a holster more than a bandolier, and yeah. that's the way with that's pretty much the way with all the pistol blasters. Yeah, they have, they pretty much all have the little uh, loopy thing on the bottom of the handle here for putting like a carabiner or yeah, some kind of and a clippy thing on it. On the Maverick, it's on the back of the slide, which doesn't make any sense. It's make just going to be kind of hand, hanging there, dangling, bouncing, and half cocked and everything. Yeah, but that's enough on that. Proton, it's cool. It's the lowest price point of the Vortex series. Yep, until they come out with a uh, micro-sized Vortex Blaster, which I would say isn't out of the question, but probably would be somewhat difficult. Eh, we'll see. For now, this is, this is as good as you need for a short little pistol. This is my guy. I like the Vigilant. This was the first uh, blaster that I received from the Vortex line. Um, Probably my second favorite, next to the big bad boy. Um, I th this thing just works really well. Absolutely. I mean, it's 
A pretty simple blaster, it's pretty accurate, good, gets fairly good distance. Yeah, it's fun. We've gone on and on about the internal clip on here and all the tricks for storing extra discs in it and everything. Um, so we're not going to spend too much time on it because really we've, we've kind of talked it apart, really. Yep. Oh, you had it loaded still. Yes, I did have it loaded still. <laughs> here, I, here, here I go just uh, you know pulling triggers and stuff, <laughs> not even realizing. Hey, look, that one was loaded too. Well, we don't need to talk about these anymore. Well, we, 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 we still can. I mean, up. basically, this is the same blaster with uh, a few minor differences. This one's just the first. This one's the first Vortex repaint. Yeah, and you know, to be honest with you, I like it. Um, it, it, it. It is quite a bit different in color scheme from the Praxis. Uh, the green is lighter to match the Raven. Um, here, take a look at them side by side here. Uh, the barrel on the. Praxis is all orange. They changed it to mostly green in the Lumatron. Um, I mean, other than that, bank broke, don't fix it. All the striations and everything are pretty much the same, only a little bit reversed. Yeah. All around a good blaster. Um, the only thing that I personally thought it was missing was slam fire. Yeah. But, uh, I'm sure they'll figure that out soon enough. I'm hoping they do. Um, Slamfire is really fun, and I'd like to see, you know, more rapid release firing with the Vortex discs. The only way that you really get that right now is with the Nitron. Um, even, even with the Nitron, it's still rather slow because it it's is... not fully automatic. No. You have to pull the trigger each time you want to fire a disc. No, you can hold it down and let it fly. You can hold it down and let it fly. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you can. I thought you couldn't. Give her a shot. Let's try it out. Oh, yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're good. I always thought for some reason they should have pulled the trigger to do it. I guess not. This is my this is my baby. This is my favorite. I like the big dog. I'm honestly not that big of a fan. I mean I like it in in you know in the lineup and I think it's a great blaster. It's just honestly not my favorite. I'm a sucker for things that are like battery operated and, and, and whatever, so this is my favorite because, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> not only does it take a lower battery load than like the, um, the um, Vulcan especially, um, it's the first one, the first flywheel powered blaster to give you control over when you want to use it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It does have some marked improvements from um, blasters in, the previous, in previous lineups. Um, and I love that scope attachment. It looks, scope it looks wicked sweet. Yeah. And it you can't beat twenty round clip. I you 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 can't beat it. I just wish it came with two instead of just the one. Yeah, and that's only a Walmart kind of deal if you can find it. If still. you can find it. But uh, you know, and, and another thing is that the second clip spot doesn't quite work as well. As we talked should. about that in the first episode. Um, there's a little plastic flap. Uh, kind of like a little bit of extra flashing around a screw hole um, that when you put the clip in there it can uh, dent one side of the dart as or the uh, disc as it's in yeah. there. I'm, I'm really wondering about that too because I haven't really heard about it from anybody else. Nobody else seems to be complaining about it. Maybe they're just not noticing or maybe it's just something with my blaster. Or maybe it, people just don't care. I suppose I just care. Cause you do because you're I don't like my I'm not a perfectionist. You know, well, I just don't like my discs to get ruined. You just pristine, pristine. Yeah, and that little notch could wreck their uh, their aerodynamics. Good. Who knows? <clears throat> what I am liking about the Vortex line, something that they haven't really done so much with um, the End Strike, is they have um, more um, exact expansion disc sets. Pretty much everything that you buy is one full clip load or, or multiple clip loads. Yep. Um, in the, for the Lumatron, they came out with a 10 round expansion pack, um, just enough to fill up your clip and get going again. For the regular Vortex discs, they have them in, uh, you can buy them in 10, 20, and 40. Yep, I've seen the packs just, come, just recently come out into stores. Um, you can pick them up for, I think it's, I wanna say it's, I, I'm pretty sure the 40 disc one is about 20 bucks, so I want to say that the 
20 rounders, probably about 12 ish. Sounds about right, but I'm not a. I don't care about pricing, I just buy stuff. <laughs> I care a little bit to know like what uh, what category the blasters fit into, but as far as like the refill kits and stuff like that, uh, if I need one, I'll buy one. Yeah, and I really like the look of the. Um, the packaging, the packaging on those? as well. Yeah, it's really cool. They, they, they took kind of the same graphic and, and color scheme and everything from the box packaging and just kind of ramped it up a little bit. The, the, the bigger packs, they have a cool little uh, curved side to them. They're all like shiny and everything. I like it. Yep, and you can see all the ammo inside, and it's, it's nice and, and well positioned, and it just looks like a, it looks like a great package. Oh, yeah. And it it's, reminds me in a similar vein to the new Darte ammo, where they yes. put it into a, into a box into a, that instead you of just the little, see. Yeah, instead of just a little plastic bag, which I never really liked because darts can get squished or misformed in some way, shape, or form in just those plastic bags. Putting them in a, a container of some sort um, is way, way better in my opinion. Absolutely. In talking about Vortex, we can't ignore the latest development the elephant in the room that uh, will probably be announced this week. Hopefully. 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 Um, you'll probably be seeing this episode uh, sometime midweek, um, but most of these episodes get filmed uh, the previous weekend. So we don't know for sure whether this will actually get, this information will actually be released, but hey. Might as well do it anyways. Might they're well going to tell. It. They're going to talk about it eventually. Eventually, the news will break, and we'll have to come out with it anyway. So why not just do it when we hear when we hear about it? We are talking, of course, about <coughs> the Pyragon. The Pyragon. I I want to say I have a little bit of mixed feelings about it, but I'm really leaning toward really liking it. Yes, absolutely. It's a complete new spin on Vortex, really. It has a brand new paint job. It's all silver and like red and stuff. I think it's white. It's, well, white, gray, and red. Yeah, we'll put it in there. Fine. And I, for one, like red on the blasters. They haven't done too many blasters that use red in their color scheme. I like red as more of an accent. Now, some, like, you know, they had the, the, the red series, whatever it was called. The Crimson series? Crimson series, yeah. And that, that, that was a nice red, but I think it, it looks better overall as more of an accent color and not a main color. That's why I like it in the Pyragon so much. Yeah, because it seems like its main color is white. Pretty much white, silver, gray, whatever. Light, yeah. light coloring. Anyway, um, what makes this blaster so like cool, besides the paint job, is its new clip. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna see a new forty round. From from what we hear, this um, some of this information isn't very reliable um, as so far. But as far as we know, it's a forty round barrel clip. Just a huge monster thing underneath there. Now, looking at it otherwise, it's pretty much just another remodel of the Praxis, which isn't bad. Praxis is really good, and you know, the more they they work on it, the more they can get the kinks out of it, and the better the better it'll be. Yep. Um, it it it's not a complete. It's just not, it's not just a recolor of the Praxis. No. It uses a sim a, a similar form um, for the blaster, but the details are all changed. Um, the handle's not as, as uh, curved as the Praxis. It, it's not the um, tactical rail on top goes farther down. Yep. Uh, the handle completely different for the for uh, the, the pump action. The, the pump action has like a pistol grip thing here now with a thumb hole. Looks really cool. Um, I can't wait for it to come out. I wish it was battery operated, but you know maybe they'll add slam fire to it so you'll be able to pop out those 40 rounds even faster hopefully it's 40 rounds it looked they, they said it was well I'm, I'm fairly sure it is 40 rounds and with the size of the barrel it's got to be it's going to be really high capacity yeah. either way uh which is which is great yep and the discs are red the discs are red so they they kind of with the whole name pyragon and the red all over the place they really kind of make this thing feel like a flamethrower even the even the barrel clip hanging on the bottom of the blaster kind of looks like this big massive like flamer fuel tank it looks pretty cool absolutely and you know that's why i think that that slam fire is virtually guaranteed in this blaster because i mean you don't think of a when you think of a flamethrower you don't just think of little shots of flame <laughs> you're you're pumping out that flame so I think that with that, the combination of the pistol grip, the name, the look, and the, the, <coughs> the barrel clip, 
I think we got a sure thing in, in slam fire with this. We'll 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 hope we'll hope. I I really severely hope it does, but I'm not going to put it in the category of guarantee yet. Yeah, we have we haven't had enough information. We haven't seen the box art or anything for it, so we don't really know for sure. And we've just seen a couple of images from it, and yeah, we're really excited. But I mean, from the look of it, we definitely can see that Hasbro has. Uh, some surprises up their sleeves still. They, I'm, they, they, they keep amazing me. Every twist and turn, they come out with something completely different, completely changing the way that I think about this company and blowing my mind away. They, they all, they, they, they never disappoint. Nope. Um, I've been racking my brain for a while now, trying to figure out how they could get a high capacity blaster out, and I gotta say, I'm very curious about the mechanism that this new barrel. I can't produces. wait to see that clip. Yeah, yeah, just to see how you load everything in there. Because I mean, it, it's it's circular. It's not just this big straight long thing. So you got to figure out how they go. They they're gonna have to spiral in there some way. Some way, yeah. And <coughs> I wouldn't think it'd be a battery operated clip because that'd be pretty wasteful. I mean, we already have the. I'd buy it. <laughs> well, no, I'm not saying that I wouldn't buy it. I'm still going to buy it, whether it's battery operated or not. But still, I would think that it'd be more likely to be uh, some kind of spring powered uh, mechanism with the. As opposed to battery operated. Yeah. yeah. Which is way, way more likely, but still curiouser and curiouser. Yeah. Um, and uh, for the as for the. That the uh, Pyragon seems like it's probably going to come out uh, sometimes sometime between now and I would say September, uh, sometime over the summer because of the Elite series. Uh, we'll talk about the Elite series in a future episode, but uh, since uh, the first couple blasters are coming out in August and then the big one in September, uh, I'm thinking that the Pyragon is probably going to be sometime before that to kind of satiate us until that point. Probably, more than likely. And who knows, there are still maybe some other surprises coming out in 2012 for uh, for the Vortex line. I would almost be willing to guarantee that there are going to be, there is going to be at least, at least one more blaster coming out this year in the Vortex line because it seems to me that they wouldn't just come out with uh, four blasters uh, one year and then one the next. Well, technically you got two because you got the Lumitron and the Pyragon. But yeah. still, I I hope that that they keep popping out new stuff for the for, for the Vortex line. I really see this as not a competitor, but a but an accent to the End Strike line. And I really want to see both both lines just just flourish and keep keep doing well. Absolutely, I think that with the Vortex lineup, Nerf has definitely got a winner on their hands. Something different from their competition. Um, something that their competition really can't compete with honestly Not really i mean i mean those little those little foam donuts don't don't do justice to the, the vortex disc no they really don't uh leaps and bounds above any other type of disc that we've seen before yep and uh, you know with the vortex disc too there's there's so many different ways that they can um you know ch maybe change it up or um, they could probably make them, they could make them bigger. Yeah, they, you can in, with the with the the dual um, material construction. They can really color them really however they want. You know, want. And since since they move forward and spin, I'm willing to bet that we'll see some whistling vortex ammo sometime in the future. I would like to see that. Yes, that would be really cool. I think that it would be fairly fairly possible. Since they spin too, it'd be kind of nice to see some like like stripy psychedelic almost things on there. Whee! Oh, it's so pretty as it's hitting me in the face. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I, th I think that the Vortex definitely has uh, a big future for it Room alongside the end strike lineup. Yep. Again, not replacing or directly competing with, but in addition to. It's a, it's, it, it's a great new member of the, of the Nerf family. Absolutely. Do we have anything else? Was there... I do have one more thing. Okay. Um, it does not relate to Vortex, but I promised a friend that I would do this. So I'm going to have to say thank you to Jeff of DartBlasters.com for hooking me up with my latest acquisition. Yes, it is a long shot, 
but it is a very special long shot. It's not just the long shot. Because it has oh, right. this guy. This guy is the Night Finder light. The Night it's, Finder scopey lighty thing. It's, it's, they call it the Night, the night Finder sight, but it's <coughs> not really a sight, it's, it's a light. But um, it came with the blue long shot, and I honestly don't have much information on it other than the fact that it came with one version of long shot. It was obviously an exclusive um, to some store or another. It's rare. Um, it is. It is very rare. I've only seen maybe three of them online. It's cool. I mean, it's very similar to the the other. Uh, the green light, whatever it was, thingy that I didn't the really like because mission it was kit all light. mission kit thingy. Um, this is a little bit cooler because you get to dial it in a little bit more. I've always liked the the, the night finder being able to raise, lower, move your uh, sight around to try and get it more accurate. Although I could never dial it in exactly. Absolutely, and that's why I was looking for this because it's not not only because it's rare, but because you can actually adjust it and you can actually get a little bit more use out of it. Yeah. Um, so check out darkblasters.com. Um, they have quite a bit of rare blasters and newer blasters that you can't really find everywhere. Like the long shot because it's it's gone. Tear. It's gone. It's yes. Gone. You can't buy it anymore. Yeah. Appar or from what we've heard this year is apparently the end of the long shot in uh, production. Doesn't mean they won't bring it back in the future. It just means that they're not making it anymore as far as we know. As far as we know. So That might change, but for now, uh, we got plenty more blasters to play with, so I'm not too concerned about it. No. no not so. too much at all. And you, you can still get them someplace. <coughs> well, yeah, back some. Online, yeah. So uh, that's all we have for the adult fans of Nerf Show today. Join us again in two weeks for our next episode. What's our next episode? I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay, it'll be a surprise for everybody. Absolutely. Bye.